people. Uh, welcome to another episode of Aaron's Adventures. Today we actually have a camera person, which is great because it, usually it's me and, and I'm not very good at the camera. We even have a director. Ta-da. Director Shane. <laughs> Today we're going to try and do this as quick as possible. We're going to show you how to do a, re a retaining wall uh, using the, uh, the, the post and panel system. It, it's, this particular area that we're doing it in is not a good area for this type of uh, this type of system, but that's what the customer wanted. So this saw that we're working with is like uh, granite and clay. I said it in that order because it's mostly granite and very little clay. Uh, but depending on where you live, uh, you've got to check with your councils what the regulations are for this uh, for the area of Perth, Western Australia, where we are. I think 600 mil you can do a retaining wall, and you don't need council permission for that. Anything above that, you will need to get the you know building approval and that sort of thing. But uh, check with your local areas to what your situation is. So we're only going to show you a 600 mil high wall because that's all you're allowed to do, but, which is not a problem if you want, you can make for a better wall, if you want to go higher than that, which is what we're going to do, is to stage it. You go, you go 600 mil and then you step it back at whatever distance you like, whatever garden bed or whatever you want, you want or whether you want steps up, and then do another 600 again. And then you can get a 1.2 metre high retention without any council permission. And you can do this yourself and save yourself a lot of money. Uh, these particular posts and panels that we've got a hold of are from a company here in Perth is uh, Wonderwalls. I'm quite happy with the product, I'm happy with the company, the, uh, they do a very good job. These posts also, they do have steel rods through them to give them a lot of, uh, a lot of strength. You can just pan back up uh, there, um, 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 Brenda the camera lady. Uh, this is one that we prepared earlier for you. But, uh, you can do just about anything with them. There is a limitation to as the, uh, the angling of your wall as to how much you can get out of it. The drawback of this sort of wall though is that where the post goes you don't have a lot of choice. That the, These panels are, are just over a metre long so you've only got a limitation of it's got to go somewhere on that outer uh, uh, diameter of the curve. Whereas like if any other type of retaining wall you can, you know, limestone blocks you can do whatever you like with. But these are quick uh, to do, well, they haven't been quick to dig. But if you can dig a hole you can do this yourself, you don't need to get other people to do it for you. In the process of a 600 mil high wall, you'll need 1.2 meter posts. It doesn't matter what size wall you're doing, it's always double. If it's 1.2 meter high, you'll need a, your 2.4 meter long post will need to go into the ground. Uh, for, for like uh, this, sort of, let's say one and a half bags of rapid set, 20 kilo rapid set, like uh, of rapid set there. Uh, if you're going more than that, uh, you'd want at least two bags. Depending on the, your soil type, uh, if you're lucky if you're in an area where you've got really soft, your loomy soil, your grey, sandy dirt that's very loose and soft, you definitely go full two bags. You want a bit more rapid set in there, a bit more footing in there, because that soil tends to you know, move with the, uh, the flow of the water. So when it rains, you can pop a bit of undermining. But this particular soil we got, is, it is, once it dries, it sticks like glue. So it's, it's not a problem, as you can see by this slope. This particular wall is only going to be really retaining this sort of section here. There's no foundation of a house or anything like that. It's, it's just small plants are going here so that it doesn't require a lot of strength. So we're actually going to cheat today and we're only putting 900 mil high posts. That's because deeper under the ground there, there's a solid granite rocks under there and it's an absolute nightmare. But I've found so far that these have not been a problem. That's only down there 300 and these just suckers ain't going anywhere. And that's with about one and a half bags of rapid set. This section over here, another way to cheat is well, when we put the post in is to make the footing of the post further towards the back. You can actually could go a little bit more depending on your soil and that creates kind of an anchor that when the soil goes here it's, it's the, the, uh, the counteraction or the weight of the soil actually keeps the wall up. Uh, so that's another way to cheat it but the right way to do it is double the depth but in this circumstance uh, we're, we're going to have to cheat. When I first started doing this foolishly I was actually taking my time to grab each one of these panels which weighs about 30 odd kilos and just slot them in and use them to get my distance and everything and they weigh a ton and it was a nightmare and I thought what the heck am I doing? Get yourself a piece of wood, I've got a, a, originally a piece of pine panel, timber lap panel I found on a rubbish heap and then you cut the piece of wood to pretty much exactly the same length as, as the panel. I actually just added like a couple of mils just, just to be sure, but not too much because you don't, you don't want much of a gap that the saw can come around the back of but for, yeah, just a couple of millimetres longer than the actual panel and just use that as a template. Same with the post, there's a, I think just down next to you there, Brenda, we have mm -hmm. a, we've got a post just here and I cut that one to the, to the same height of that. So then you don't have to pick these heavy things up till the very, very last minute. I've also, just to make it easier for ourselves, 
I just, I've, you can see I've just drawn on it, it's actually a fraction longer because I actually wanted that gap. I've just marked you know, 300, 600, 900 and you'll see in a moment how that's going to be handy. I've, I've, I also do this job avoiding string lines. I started using string lines and they're just a pain in the butt. The posts fall on it, you end up tripping over the things, they get in the way and you've got to keep resetting it and they were really annoying. I just find if you've got a couple of good spirit levels, these are my tiling spirit levels, but just a cheapy one's fine. Uh, th that's really all you need. The tools are basic. We've got a matic, a shovel, bag of cement, measuring tape to begin with to mark these bits of wood. And, and, and that's all you need. It's, it's really that simple. Once you've dug the hole, uh, th that's it. Uh, you can just do a job where, I suppose if you wanted to, just keep, you know, keep digging holes and put the posts in and then just to put the panels in later. I would recommend not doing that. Like put the panels in as you go because if you've made an error somewhere along the line in one of these posts if they've moved or something's gone wrong you're going to pass that error down the line and you're going to you know, make it a waste of time to do every post that you've done once they're cemented in that's pretty much it you've passed the point of no return but uh, here's one that we prepared earlier we're just going to show one post today because once you do one post the, the, the job is just repetition from there if, uh, in this case we have got this wall here to go off to get a nice parallel straight line uh, I've just gone off this wall and I've used a pit area. I just again, rather than muck around with a tape measure that gets lost in the dirt or thrown about, you can see I've just used that wall, got a piece of wood, and I've physically pressed each one of these pillars to that so I know that the distance between there and there is exactly the same all the way up the line because the piece of wood says so, that doesn't change. Also with this giving me my height, you want that, that the bottom of that panel to be at least be slightly lower than the top of the next wall along. Obviously if you have it above it, you want under 90. Three inches is the best, but uh, in this case we're trying to save money and space here, so we've already, we've already gone down about, like, I'm serious, about an inch below, but it doesn't matter. Water goes downhill, doesn't go up, and in this clay soil it, it's, it's not uh, not so much a problem. Again, if you've got the grey loose soil, uh, the, you know, the opposite to this, you want to go down a little bit deeper so you don't get any undermining uh, taking place. But uh, basically that was it. And to get my height, I just brought that flush to the level of the next set of retaining wall, put on a spirit level, the bubble never lies. Once you've got that level, now you know your height here. You can also mark the post. I recommend marking it uh, on the inside in here so you don't see your pencil mark. And again, there we go, there, that's our marker. So I know there's my 600. So I know if I've got that pencil, if you can squat down a bit lower, which you can see along there, the pencil line to the top of that, and then you know where, where where your point is that you want your panels to go. If you're working from the bottom upwards, you really don't want those panels sticking out above the top, that looks ridiculous. Flush is, is best. If it goes a slight bit down, it doesn't look so bad. In some cases, we have to, like in this circumstance, moving your panels, because it's stepped down. Uh, we've had to go a 1.2 meter here because of that. The obviously, I couldn't do a 900. There's just no way you could do it. So to, so to stage this down as the gradient of, of this particular block is, uh, is quite steep, we've had to step it down like that. So that's flush, and you just drop it down. You find the distance of that is the same as that. And off we go. Uh, with this one I prepared earlier, in the process of doing this, I said the piece of, that's not the right one, that's our panel post. This is what I've used to ensure that that works. So I, I marked with the pencil the 600. I can double check with my spirit level that uh, this point is level, which it is. And I know that, that the 600 is right at the bottom. If you get it right, then you only ever need to pick up these panels once. Drop them in. Remember, I made this mistake with one of There's a pattern on it. You see a small section is too large. You want to reverse it to give that realistic sort of look of a, of a brick wall. So it doesn't matter which way we start the bottom one. Grab it by the middle. Slide her in. Don't drop it. You can put fractures in it and crack it. Uh, these have got three rods inside it. Take it down, that first one down gently. I've done one with you, you can put a hairline fracture into it. They're not going to fall apart because these have three steel rods running through it. So they are very strong. Once we've got that bottom one in place, I can double check it if you want to make sure that you're on the right track. And again, we want to reverse it to so our small bits at that end. We want to flip the other one up the other way. With my fantastic invisible safety gloves. And that's it. Once you're in, you know, it's beer o'clock. I recommend, yeah, putting the panels in as you go. 
two reasons. One, if there's, if there's any mistakes, you can correct it immediately. If these aren't slightly right, they're going to start squeezing in. If, if, if you check it when you be dry, we'll show you that later. Because if you get these squeezed in, once these are set, that's it. You, you can't you can't change it. You want this to slide in nicely. So, and it gives you when you dig your next hole, it gives you somewhere to throw the dirt. It saves you double handling it. You can dig your hole for the next, chuck it around the back of that bit of retaining wall, and, and move on. So uh, that's basically it. For that, when checking these, uh, uh, in this particular circumstance, I'm going to be—I uh, lean these slightly backwards. I go to the the, uh, the bubble, so it's not dead centre, but slightly, so the edge of the bubble is touching the line. It's a slightly backward lean. So if ever in time, if you plant plants here and they grow bigger and they do start to squeeze and compress the ground a bit, and they put any pressure on that wall at all, all it's going to do is straighten the wall up. If the wall's already dead straight, if it's going to cop any uh, pressure, it's going to start pushing it forwards. So go on a slightly backward lean. The more lean back you go, obviously, the stronger the wall's going to be in, in, in that sense, but it can kind of look a bit weird. Do not, do not measure from the top. These things are never usually square in the way they mould it, or the way they pour it. These are poured, that's facing down, and it's, and it's going to mould it like, like that way, like long ways. So these are not always square, so don't trust the top of it. You can see the bubble's completely wrong but up and down it is correct. You zoom it, uh, you can see it, but you can see I've got it just so that that bubble is just on the edge of that one. By repeating this along like that, you don't need a string line because the bubble doesn't lie unless the gravitational pull of the earth suddenly changes. It's not going uh, to get any different. Obviously that one you want to be perfectly up and down, so just measure it that way, measure it that way, and you're laughing. Uh, I did do it some wall once where I tried to run string line across the top to get the top levels correct. And again, they just, it gets in the way, it's a pain in the butt. If you look down the line there with the camera, you can probably see I've got you know, pretty darn straight without the use of any string lines at all. But uh, in this particular case, the wall has had to be staged down, so we're kind of like, each one, it is what it is, just, just go, go with it. But uh, if the wall you're doing is obviously is dead level, again, uh, the wood kind of solves it. Because, uh, you, you, you can use a string line. Uh, maybe a bit further away from the wall and you just sight it to your, to your piece of wood. So uh, we're going to, I've already dug this hole to save you the, the time and the boredom of seeing it. But we want the, the, the base of that line of that fat 300mm drop to uh, basically to be just like one inch lower with that. And we'll achieve that with, uh, again with this. Now because I'm now curving this bit of wall in, the rest of it was straight, this piece of wood is now irrelevant. But we'll, we can still get that leveled off, I can still use this as a reference point that my hole is deep enough. Another good tip to do is if you go down a bit deeper, if you've got some old bricks around your yard, chuck a brick down there first and sit it on a brick. You will find that you've got less chance of, of movement and whatnot, but because this soil is just goes rock hard, it's we don't really need to worry about it in this case. But we are going to anchor two bags of cement and we're going to anchor it more to the back there. But once again, this isn't really retaining a lot of weight, it's just a bit of garden bed, that's all. And we've got a second wall to go behind that. So what we'll do is, uh, I need to, as you can see, I obviously need to dig that a little bit deeper, got another inch to go, I'll scrape that out and I'll get that right for you. And then uh, we'll show you how to blop it in. And uh, once that's done, you can pretty much, you're, you're home and hose, that's all you need to know, you can do it yourself. So, uh, yep, pause. Yep. Okay, so we're uh, saving the bottom. I'm just digging the hole a bit deeper. Uh, I use that bit of dirt that, that to bring this level up here correct. As you can see, I, I measured down, I've made a pencil mark there about 600. I've made it level to the top of that. I don't need to get, need to get in fact, the tape measure I've now put away. I don't even need it at all now because the, the piece of wood tells it all. So that's our height. We know what, what our length is. In fact, oh, that, that's our post length. Doesn't matter. We know that that's correct. It, it's spirit level, uh, bubble level to there, so we know that that's right. This is our post length. To get the position of that hole, obviously, we, we, that's our post length piece. And you can see that that just creates the central point of the hole. I know that that should cap into there. Uh, this, this I can actually choose where this goes, and because I want to curve this off into, into the wall that way, I'm going to pick it about there somewhere. That, that looks nice. This here I've got it level to the top of the wall, bubble level to there, so I know that that's, that's the right height of the wall. I've got my 300 there and I've, I've dug the hole down now so that it is about, about an inch below that, below that marker point. 
So we're basically now ready to drop the post in. I've done it right. So help ensure that it stays upright. You don't need any fancy tools, I just use the matic to support it at the other side. And uh, like I said, if, we, if you do it right, you should only need to grab the post once, you should only need to grab the panels once, and that really saves a lot of back braking effort because it's hard enough digging the hole. So if, uh, if camera, camera lady Brenda could just take a step back. Uh, kind of stuck it on your foot. Pick the good end. Sometimes when they mold these things, uh, they don't. The, obviously, the ends don't come out always too good at one end. So find yourself the good end. That looks a bit nicer, I think, at that end than it does that one. So we'll get, we'll hide that hole. Actually, and before I drop it in, here's a quick tip. Let's mark our. What I do with that pencil? Do it away, did I? That was the other tool, pencil. Real expensive tools to do this job. Okay, so if that's our top, that's our top. There's our 600, I can see that down through there, that that's our 600 mark, so right there. And while I've got it out, just to make it easy for myself, I'm gonna just quickly do the other side as well. And then it takes out the guesswork when, when we get to do that, that part. There's the 600, there's our post point. So like I said, normally if you've got regular loose soil, you want to post double this length and that there should be like the same as that to that. That's how much should be in the ground. Uh, there's just nothing but hard rock under there and this concrete will actually bond to that hard rock and it's not going anywhere. But if it's if it's near the if you've got the, near the foundation of your house where that's got a support, you've got to go down that depth. You do not want to undermine the foundation of your home by no means. But that's basically so I know where it goes exactly because it's physically up against the piece of wood. I tuck that in there. This distance here doesn't matter now. I'm just going to curve it about there. And then I'm just going to check our height this way. And that needs to come up a bit more that way. So I'm going to pull at the bottom against that piece of wood. Just rule that hole. You can imagine trying to do this with like a big 1.8 meter or 2.4 meter post. Usually when the experts do it like that, they've often got a bobcat or a little excavator or something to help drop it in because they do get heavy. That should be us there. Down. A bit more. And note, we're bouncing on a rock. There's a big rock down there and as I get it up straight, it's now lifting this. I've got no choice. I have to get down there and get rid of that rock. So the company who sells this stuff also install it. They actually will not do this area. They tell you, sorry, we don't. We will not do that area. And now I see why. It's, just, it's a nightmare. So unfortunately, I have to pick this back out again and dig some more hole. So you might as well pause that one because nobody wants to see that. Okay, so we, we got that uh, that rock out of there. It was a bit of a mucking around. But, uh, just had to double check our depth again. We got the depth right. Yep, bubbles level. It's nice, we've got a good inch below it. We've got our distance, that's still level. So we're doing well. Hopefully now this should be the only time we should shift it. Got a good side up. Tuck it into that piece of wood. We don't need that there anymore, the hole is what it is. I'm just gonna bump that up and tilt his level. And there we are there. That's it, that, that's nice that way. Now when you put this on the on say the back of the pill on the flat side, just double check that sometimes it has imperfections and bumps and that in it, and you could actually have your spirit level like, like I've got it like that, you can see the gap. That's actually now giving me a false reading. Just check that, that like, and you can see actually it even that the post even curves in this tip. Just make sure that your spirit level, a longer one would be better, but make sure the spirit level is making full contact there and giving you a true reading. As you can see, this is way too far forward. We want to get it so that that bubble is just touching that front line, so that it's leaning just slightly back that way. You can you can do what you like. If you want to go further back on a steeper angle and really make a strong wall, and if the wall was curved as well, it would make for a very, very strong wall. But uh, in this case, we, just, we, we don't want that. Let's come back that way a bit. I'm just going to rub that into the dirt, try and get it to sit still. 
to keep this end up. I'm just going to shove my matic into there, just to give it, just, just to keep that still. I'll double check that that way. Yep, that's beautiful. And then just double check again. We'll get something else like uh, the shovel maybe. I could probably lean that shovel just there to give a bit of a weight to it that way. And then no, we want to come further. Just tuck a bit of dirt under that post. I should have found a bit of building rubble in there. There we go. Tuck that bit of building rubble underneath there. Nope, we need some more. There's a bit of a messing about, but once, that's why I'm saying you're having a brick is actually a better way to go because you can sit the brick down there, get a little, one of those little tiny spirit levels. One in my pocket here. Oh, that one, it doesn't matter. You can get like for two bucks, you get these little tiny spirit levels or something like that, and sit it on the brick and then get the brick correct, and that makes that a lot easier. But we're, we're cheap, we don't have any bricks lying around here. Now, that is spot on level at the moment. I'm going to leave it like that for now because once we've got the rapid set poured in, we've got a little bit of rigidity to it, we can just push that back by hand. But that's where we want it is that bubble level just touching the back of that. Because the reason why we use that one is because then we know all the posts are exactly the same. We don't need string lines, we know we're consistent, we know, we know it's going to look good. So that's basically that. So now we, we get a rapid set and I'm going to show you quickly uh, how to do that properly. Some people muck this one up. So um, what you don't do is get the dry rapid set and pour it into the hole. You fill the hole first completely with water and it doesn't matter how much water that, uh, that you put in there. Cement can only absorb so much water. So it doesn't matter, like the more water the better, just fill that hole up and you add the dry cement to the water, not the water to the dry cement. If you do that, uh, it's just like baking a cake, no different. You're doing the wrong order. As soon as that that, that dry cement, you pull the hose in there, you've already started uh, tacking up the top section of uh, cement and there's bits of dry stuff underneath that hasn't gotten set. If you fill the hole with water first, the whole lot is going to uh, bond and set evenly. So we get the hose. Hey, Director, you in charge of the hose? Yes. Well, where is it? I am. I'm on the other side of the property. You'll be breaking into the next door neighbour's yard while we're going... <laughs> boring everyone on this footage here. I might as well pause that one because it's going to be a while getting that hose. <laughs> I thought just uh, while I'm fully filling this up, uh, depending on your soil, sometimes when you blast the water in like this, the water can undermine what's underneath. That's why, again, a brick underneath it has takes away that problem so much. But uh, when you fill it with water, especially if you've got that soft grey soil, you can suddenly start undermining underneath the post and start changing the post position. So watch that. If you've got really loose soil, seriously, just get an old brick paver, anything you got, even a chunk of slab, something concrete underneath it, and set it on that, and that will really help take away that problem for you. So just, yep, yeah, fill the hole. Once we've got the cement in, as it's like uh, starting to dry, for the first 10 minutes, that's your crucial time. Don't walk away from it and go and crack a beer and then just forget about it, because if, if it does happen to move and shift, once this is set, that's it, you're past the point of no return. I'm just going to keep getting this piece of wood and bring it up and down and just, just double check it at the top there but, uh, that you can get the panel in because you, you can't really cut these panels and you sure as eggs don't want to. That's more than enough water to get at least one bag in. I can always top it up in a minute so we can do that. So I'll leave that there and this place is bag of cement and then I'm just going to all around with it. So you add the cement to the bag. Make sure you wear a face mask. I've got uh, my particular brand of face mask. It's called the Invisible Series. <laughs> uh, this, this one is also called the, the Hold Your Breath model. <laughs> don't breathe that in. Especially tiling glue. You don't want to breathe in tiling glue. So we can do with a bit more water there. We can wash that bit of cement off that. Now you do want to make sure the side that is facing, if you've got cement like this, you're going to get it off while it's wet. No problems. If you let that dry, it will stain it, and it's a pain in the butt to get it off. So just, just, yeah, just wash in all our rapid set. Especially like you know, we should have had a bit more water. See that's pumped up like that, and there's dry bits. If we had that full, you'd have less of a problem there. Mark by one of the garden. I'm going to blast that into that. Make sure that the water gets right into that. Gets all that dry stuff. Get you know, gets its fair share of uh, moisture. 
there's no such thing as too much water. The cement can only absorb so much. And the rest will just dissipate. And the slower that it dries, the better the bond. It's like that with almost any kind of glue. You've also got to watch your level. That's why two bags and 1.2, you won't have an issue with this, but because I've gone a little bit too shallow in this and we're cheating, if, if this sets too high, or sets below, above that 600 mark, yeah, you then get, once that sets, then of course you can't get your, your panel to where you want, you might have to start chipping away at it, and that's just unnecessary. So just watch that one. So as we've done that, now that that's sort of, that's starting to go tacky already, you see, so we can just double check our work. See, that needs just to come back a bit. I'm just gonna tap that back. You can see it on that side, but there we are, we're level there. And on the back bit, I'm just gonna move that out of the way, that was just resting there. Okay, so we need to come back and just bring it to that line. Just give me a shove. There we go. So just nice there. That's exactly where we want it there. And that's where we want, that's where we want that there. This one's starting to move. We'll have to keep an eye on this one. This Matic's not doing a very good job of supporting that that way. But again, as this is setting, just keep checking it with this. I've actually got a bit of that concrete hasn't been moulded too well. Knock that out. Anyway, as long as this bit of wood piece is actually a little bit about the same thickness as the panel. So, 35 mil thick piece of piece of pine. I just got off a rubbish heap. 90 by 35. About the same thick, thickness as the panel. Fits nicely. Which is yeah. Just, always just checking that you can get that up and down. If you've done it in slightly in too much, and if that top section is like is too much in, you're in trouble. If anything, you want it. You know, like that's why I've made this a couple of millimeters too big to allow a nice easy slip in of that panel. So that's looking good that way. As time goes by, this is setting even more and more. So it should make you know, getting this right even easier. So, there, so if anything, if they have it slightly, you know, the open mouth is better. But of course, if you do that, then you're then eating into the area for the next panel. So you really do want to straight up and down that way the best you possibly can to make it just easier for yourself. Double check it this way. Again, I think what we'll do is we'll get this piece of wood on this side, like that, and then we'll, get, we'll just have the shovel then on, on this side. In a moment, that might be better. Just shove it into that wall. If you've got like a star picket or another shovel, like a spade or something that's wedged into the ground, just give it a shove. Just, just to give it a. There we are. That's us. So it's there. It's us there. So that's starting to look good. So now that we've got that basically right. As I said, don't check it off the top like that because you can't trust the top of these things. With our face mask on again. Off the bread. <sighs> Thank goodness we got a bit of a breeze. And then we're just going to blast that in there, clean it up. There should have been more water in there, but I've been spending too much time talking. Checking that the height of that isn't over that, which is good, it's under there. As I said, we've gone, what, a good big bit of footing. Like I said, we are 300 mils short in terms of the depth. Way too much water, which is great. And that's that. So basically, that's it. Just double checking as I go. You want to do this soon because rapid set does set quick. And once you're at this stage, you better have it right because you, you do not lift it up. If you lift it up, the cement's going to go underneath the post and you've just changed your height. You've ruined it. You do not want to go lifting it. You want to have that base where it should do. Like again, a brick down there would have been better. So that's all right. And that's still nice. We're looking good. Once that's set, then go and have yourself a cup of tea, give that a few minutes, 
and then you're ready to do the next panel. Like I, said, I usually wait for a bit because I like to be able to drop these, the next two panels in place once again so you, when you dig that hole you've got somewhere to throw the dirt. You can throw it straight around the back of that and it saves you double shifting it. And that's it. You've, so, you've seen me drop the, the panels in. That's as easy as it gets. You, you, that's how to put a post in. That's how to build the wall. You can build walls as long as you want now. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for watching. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs>